so we'll be enforcing improvements and we simply reduce the services and maintenance in the country parks and we will be looking at a much worse situation. We don't find some way of increasing the money we have available for maintenance in our parks and very quickly to okay. see rates. We will lose our green flags and people will not visit so I think that will be much more, more much worse for businesses around custom those risks and the 50p charge while not our deal is much preferable to masses, massive reduction of business and not in terms of you know, regular business the parks. You know, we accept my sick day a week you know, for the, the household and the parliament. You know, and you know, it's obviously you know, someone who's bought their box. You know, but sometimes a day, you know, it pulls its pennies uh, for that, that, that pennies. And, uh, and you know, obviously the money goes to the rules and the maintenance of the parks. And we're keeping this fantastic thing on there. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And that now brings to its conclusion, the, the people who spoke, spoke on behalf of the decision maker and also the people who spoke on behalf of the lead signature. And now I'll throw it open to the, to the floor for committee members um, to make any comments that they'd like to make before we come to um, the decision making process. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, three things have come to mind uh, in relation to what's going on. Uh, there's a national campaign going on at the moment, the Love Your Parks campaign, which is something that's very uh, heavily presented by the local authority. As I mentioned earlier, myself and my work colleagues were at Tor Park in Eastern, and we, my work colleague, yeah. uh, actually did one of the show presentations for the, the authority. Um, we heard a lot about what's happening with golf courses and stuff like that. We are members as an authority of the Gulf Coast for the North West. It's one of the things that we promote and really hope that will generate a lot of revenue for our local authority. And we can see the downside on that. As for the, 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 as for the local parts, as I said this morning, a uh, cabinet member was posting how many green flag we do have. It's excellent that we do have so many, but most of them run by friends. They're, they're, they're only implemented by the local authority. They're run by friends groups, and as you know, the chair, they're quite good at working with friends groups as you do with the honourable man. So I'm giving that one a bit of a, you know, miss. The thing that really came out in the whole process to me was uh, the lack of consultation with the businesses that are majorly affected by this. And it does, it does highlight points that were made in relation to the 20 pledges from there. They are people, businesses, and environment. Um, I'm afraid the authority and the cabinet member missed every one of those three in relation to consultation with, with the local communities. Uh, I know he's, when I asked the question how much did it cost uh, for the consultation, I didn't get an answer because he said it was a general one that we gave to the whole of the world Peninsula. So in relation to this particular issue, that there was none. Um, we come up from uh, the figures that were presented by the office and I've got great respect for Steve Atkins. He's a wonderful officer. He was a sterling way for this authority. But as it was highlighted, most of these are guesses, estimations and estimations. And anything from 30 to 20%, less trips, less revenue. I know we've gone on about the £50 uh, batch that you can buy for the year. Did you get an answer back when that first came out? But the last one was a pre-decision because that was presented before we even had the first call in to look at this particular process. Um, I do have a recommendation to move to the end chair, but that's not my to make. Anybody else? Jane? Okay. I sat in on the, the first calling and I listened to many of the our pension stories and, and the way our pension I appreciate that cuts hurt uh, some people. Um, I'm, I, I'm actually um, pleased that the officers listened and the recommendation was to um, halve the charges. So I really think that we went some way to try and address the issues that affect people here. Um, I, I know people probably get more than the same, but we wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for the government. Blaine, Brown and Blair. No, 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 David, you 
all the time. Believe me, I spent my life down there. Now I'm retired because I have animals down there. All those things worry me. I'm worried about the slackness that appears to be around the money here. Not because I want to take money out of people, but I think, in fairness, if we are going to judge this system, and it has to be judged after 12 months on solid, straight grounds, we have to have solid rules that are being abided by. Otherwise, the information that we get and the evidence we get will not be right. And we'll be back to, oh, we made a best guess. Now, okay, people do make best guesses, but at some point you've got to back it up with evidence. Not anecdotal evidence, that I met a person who said, but evidence of what's going on. And only then will we know absolutely what the situation is. Thank you, Chair. Uh, very, very briefly, uh, I confess that um, I pick up on something that you just said, Christine, which is that I am slightly uh, confused and concerned in terms of equal measure. Um, we've heard from Mr. Atkins about the fact that um, we are going to be quite lax with regards to implementing this. And I can have visions of the ingenuity of the people in this room who will have somebody standing at the end of Ferry Road with one badge at £50, handing it out to people for an hour and then passing it back in again and handing it out again. It, it just seems quite farcical that we've gone to a point where we're looking at this as, a, as an income generator, but we're not really going to get any income from it because we're not going to enforce anything, we don't have the facilities to enforce it, nobody's going to go down from the council all that way down Ferry Road to enforce it. It, it just seems to me as though it, it has been very, very piecemeal and it doesn't sound as though it's been thought out, there's been no consultation. Genuinely, I'm going to buy a £50 ticket and I'm going to stand at the end of the road and I'm going to give it to anybody who wants it because that's how easily this is going to be usurped. And if you genuinely think you're going to make the money that you think you are, whatever your motivations, and I'm going to keep this completely non-political, unlike some, but this is a farce if you think it's going to bring any money in, in any way, other than to annoy the people on those particular parts of the world. Absolute farce. Tonight, David, I look forward to you buying the oh, yes. <laughs> and standing at Easter and giving it out, but you can only give it to one car because well, of cars. Only yeah, one car. Jerry. Thanks, Mike. I mean, I've listened at great length to all the various points that have been made tonight. It's really you know, about these issues that are going to be made by uh, the residents here. And, you know, speaking of the you know, other council that has been here, like many others, for a long, long time, I mean, I can remember years ago when. We would never ever contemplate looking at cuts in social services. What are we doing now? We're looking at cuts in social services. And why is this happening? Because everything is being, well, you let us use the word, destroyed by central government. And, you know, I, I'm afraid, you know, we have to make difficult decisions here. And, you know, we'll take our flag for making those decisions. But time after time, I have to listen on this council to people on the other side and say, you know, this is nothing to do with us. We've got selective amnesia. This isn't our problem. Well, I'm awfully sorry. This is your problem. And you are causing the problem. And but I'm not going away from the, again, we've got to make difficult decisions. And I'm not shying away from that. But please, I am absolutely fed up of hearing the arguments from this side here that it's nothing to do with that. I can assure you it is. Well, we're fed up of you saying it's nothing to do with you and it's all down to the government. This is local and national politics are different. Is, yes. Yes. Is, there any, is there any further, please, members, is there any, Steve? Recommendations on day one Well, Warren. Uh, thank you, Chair. I mean, I think it's common business, really, that when there's a shortfall in budgets, you've got to balance the books. Now, none of us sat around here in the seat election to deliver cuts. We sought elections to represent our communities as community champions. But we've got an obligation and the authority to have to balance this authority's books to make sure that we can provide services to our most vulnerable people. Now, 
what's so important is that we've got a responsibility here that although we've got to ban top books, we've got to make sure that the effect on our residents are as minimal as they can be. Now, the £50 permit, I think, is a positive step compared to the original proposal. I sat around here and we discussed previously. I think that is a positive step. I think that what we have to make sure is that we can do it in that, in that quarterly intervals which the officer will take back and hopefully seek to um, report back to us on. I think that's an important step. It's fact that central government provides us with that bag of money and that bag of money has been cut from the bottom and it is getting smaller and smaller. This is what's forced us into this position. I don't, I'm not going to get political about this because I don't think the residents have come sat in that, those chairs to listen to party politics. But it is fact that central government are put in our budget and we have to reflect that in the decisions we take in this council and in these committees. I think that this steps tonight is positive compared to the previous report, but none of us want to deliver these cuts. None of us want to implement car parking charges. We've got to, to balance the books to serve this board. Yeah. Would you say to those principals down at Eastern Ferry who won't be able to balance their books because Thank of you. this? Right. Is there anybody out there apart from Mr. Uh, bringing forward a motion? Okay, we've got, can I just say, does anybody want to say anything? No. No. We've got, we've got three alternatives here before us. We can refer this decision that's already been made by Cabinet on the 19th of June. We can refer it back to Cabinet, or we can refer it back to council, so there are two separate motions. One motion would be to refer it back to the cabinet member, one motion would be to refer it back to the full council, and the other motion would be to uphold the cabinet member's decision of June the 19th. So we've got three proposals there. Can I have Jean? I'd like to move that we uphold the decision made on the 19th of June by the Cabinet Member. Right. And we've got a second of that. Well, Jan, Dave. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm going to move my recommendation. I hope I get a second of a don't. I would like it recorded in a few minutes. If that's the case. And given the proposed loss of income from Arrow Park Golf Club, plus the effect on businesses in all areas next to the country park and the potential impact on businesses plus the amenities local communities express, expect, this issue should be taken back and looked at again by the cabinet. Yes, yes, yes. Is that an amendment to that? No, no, I don't think that, that is, I don't think that's a, an amendment. Dave, is it? No, that's, that's, a, a, that's, that's a motion. Yes, so we've got a motion there. Would somebody like to second that? Jerry. So we've, we've got that motion, Andrew. We've got that. Yes, Have we got any further speed? Motion, please. A motion. Um, having listened to evidence from the witnesses that have, that have been provided, the apparent conflict with the five of the Will Fledges and the damage it would cause to businesses and to council income. I move that this proposal be referred back to the cabinet member for reconsideration of withdrawing this proposal. Thank you. Right. So we'll vote on Steve's motion first, seconded by David. All those in favour of do you want do you want us to read them out again? Yes, I think we're in I, I think that's right. Having listened to evidence that the wish, evidence that the witnesses have provided, the apparent conflict with five of the will pledges and the damage it would cause to businesses and to council income, I move that this proposal be referred back to the cabinet member for reconsideration of withdrawing this proposal. Thank you. And that was seconded by David Ellison. All those in favour of that motion, please raise your hand. All those against? <laughs> oh, you can see. Six, six, uh, six 
votes all in motion, A's against, and motion is oh, lost. Not and Dave, would, would you like me to read my again? All in motion. Yeah. Given the proposed loss of income from Arrow Park Golf Club, <coughs> plus the effect on businesses in all areas next to the country parks, and the potential impact on businesses, plus the amenities local communities expect, that this issue should be taken back and looked at again. Taken back to who, Dave? Cabinet. Taken back to the cabinet member. And, look yeah. and that, I can't remember who second, Jerry, thank you. And all those in favour of that motion, please show your hand. All those against. Six, six votes for again, eight against. That was not the loss. Jean, would you like to read out your motion, please? I'd like to say. Can you put your mic up, please, if I can? I'd like to believe that we agree the cabinet decision made on the 19th of June, which reduced the original car parking changes proposal. Thank you. And that was seconded by the one. All those in favour of that motion? We've got to put our hands up, and we've got to get started. All those against? That motion to uphold the cabinet decision on June the 9th, 19th, has um, been upheld. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.